Hello, everybody. We're back in the studio. Hello, art lovers. We are with the amazing Michael Roner. Oh, and man. we finally got you out of California and over here for your first big show with oh, us. Oh, man, it's good to be here. Yeah, we're, we're super happy to you know, have you here. Um, we're premiering two originals and probably at least 10 of your uh, limited edition works. Yes, sir. And we've gotten to know each other in the last year or two by doing shows together, yes, which has yeah. been uh, had some a fun. lot of fun. <laughs> Especially fun. after hours fun. We won't get into that total detail there. but uh, We were totally on point the next day, and that's what counts. That is right. Yeah. We, we were up and running. And yep. um, I want to talk to you about how you got up and running and about your art. How Have you always been artistic, for one? Were you as art, artsy as you are now as a child? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Doing that kind of stuff? Yeah, you know, I've been drawing since I was little. It's funny because I didn't think of myself as an artist. It's just kind of what I did. I was a comic book fan, and I'm the youngest of a big family. So that's kind of how I entertained myself, was just drawing in the corner. That's how my parents kept me occupied. Right. So that's kind of always what I did, but I didn't make, like, artist connection. It's just I like to draw. Um, so, yeah, I've been drawing since I was could remember. So what what drove you to the leap of fine art? Like, you, you, you went to college for Art as well, I didn't right? go to. I went to college, but I didn't go to college for art. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, what was your college days going I, uh, to be? Yeah. I mean, I thought I was going to. I, I kind of thought I would, but then when I entered the kind of fine art or you know the art like education world, it was kind of it was not what I did. You know, they were saying, "Oh, you you need to do it this way," or it was just it felt like trying to figure you in their own box kind of thing. Yeah. 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 And and um, it just didn't. I, I got discouraged actually. I, I, mm. I that's when I thought maybe this is not for me because. Um, a, and he, you know, it was a path to get an art job, so I'd be like a graphic designer or an animator since I like to illustrate, you know? Oh. And I was like, you know, that sounds cool and all, but that's not exactly what I like doing. Hmm. Um, and so I thought maybe it's just a little hobby for me. That's, that's my, like, that was most of my 20s. And did you end up at that point getting into fine art? I mean, were you working? What yeah. was your background? Yeah, what did yeah. you get so I was, I was, I knew you were yeah. a sushi joint for yeah. a while. Yeah, so I kind of had jobs, no career. Um, straight out of college, I did like the English teaching program overseas in Japan, which was good for me because I had a lot of downtime and that's where I just filled up my sketchbook like crazy. Um, but yeah, throughout my 20s, I actually was scared of committing to anything, so I just had jobs. Like I sold cars, uh, worked in a sushi restaurant, did like odd work. Scared my family and parents like they were, you know, my mom was Korean and she was like, when are you going <laughs> to grow up? But uh, I, I was like, I don't think I found my thing yet. My sisters were like, find something, just stop, you know, get a, get a, have a career. Um, and I wouldn't admit to anybody, including myself at that point, that I wanted to be an artist. Wow. Um, but I'll fast forward a little bit. Uh, I hit that like late 20s. I hit that if I had that deathbed conversation, like if I don't give this a shot, I'm gonna die with regret. Yeah. So I didn't know what to do. So I just started drawing a lot more and hanging out in like cafes that were artsy, you know? Like if I meet an artist, I'd follow them around and shadow them, like following graffiti artists around. And so I learned a lot of different, I was never a graffiti artist myself, but they were teaching me how to use cans. And I just, I always had my sketchbook. And then I was trying to figure out how to go from sketchbook to wall art. And so that's why you see my style has kind of evolved from that. It's, it's a, wow. Kind of a comic book urban um aesthetic that you know sure. that I, I had to learn how to use color mediums so i started learning how to use watercolors to you know fill in the colors of my work um were you always kind of into the pen and ink aspect of it i mean was that where the illustration kind of yeah i know, feel, enjoyment came from i guess yeah i would say that my life went in like maybe decades like pre-20s it was all pencil art hmm. then around in college I started picking up pens and I started inking my work. Um, and then so most of my 20s was pen and ink. And then like late 20s, I was like, oh, I have to figure out color if I want this to actually hang somewhere. Right. Yeah. Right. So who are some of your influences? Because I mean, your work has a really beautiful contemporary feel to it. Mm -hmm. It's airy. So we've got a great focal point, but it also incorporates some symbology and um, geometric things yeah. that you incorporate it's yeah. kind of hard to describe to the viewer we will yeah. be going downstairs right. and we'll showing you the work yeah. here in a yeah. but uh yeah i don't know if i call it pop surrealist i don't know what the name for my work is but um to answer your question uh younger i gravitated towards salvador salvador dali mm -hmm. he was like the first amongst the classics who i thought oh he, you know he breaks a lot of rules he kind of paints what he wants to paint as opposed to trying to repeat what he saw in nature you know sure. I heard that that was the first time i was like oh the the real artists uh, are having fun 
in the way that I wanted to have fun. That's cool. Um, and then comic book wise, similarly, Todd McFarlane, you know, he would, sure. if you, you know, Spawn oh, yeah. and Batman yeah. and Spider-Man, I mean, his, his physics didn't make any sense, but it would look good. Right. Like Batman's cape was all over the place. Spider-Man was just like covered in web. And it's like, how did he even do that? But it looked good. And so yeah. these artists who kind of took liberties to make things more interesting and maybe giving you a taste of their um, aesthetic were the ones that I really was drawn to. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because sure. your work is completely different than anything I've really ever shown um, and really seen because you don't see that combination of pen and ink and watercolor mm. out there. Mm. Uh, in my, at least what I've seen, you know, it's either one or the other. Sometimes you'll find some people that do yeah. it very light. Yeah. But yours are really rich and, and beautiful. And um, Thank you. the body of work that we're showing is mainly all animals and obviously you're a big animal lover too. Mm -hmm. So was that always kind of something in your past too that peaked out throughout the work or yeah. was that just kind of the pathway that, that brought you into animals too? Yes and yes. yes and I mean, yes. I think with all of these things, when you take the long view, it makes sense. But sure. as I did it, it was just, it was organic. You know, um, the first thing you asked was about the, the color. The, the, you mentioned the watercolors, you know. Right. Like I was using a lot of um, marker for a long time, mm. and so I tend to use watercolors like I use markers, like in terms of layer, layering and building colors, right. as opposed to the lightness. And then with the animals, I always had a, you know, my mom grew up in the, the countryside of, you know, rural farm and uh, 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 in the countryside of Korea, and so didn't have any like real friends. She had said it was like trees and animals were her friends. So wow. she always just raised me with the sensibility to like really appreciate animals, you know. Oh, that's cool. So yeah. So I, I think somewhere in there, I just, I, they always had a lot of life. The animals to me always had stories to them that I appreciated. Artistically, I was doing like, I was drawing people and, and satire and stuff like that. And, th and then at one point I wanted to draw my, I, like connect with owls. And so I wanted to draw my totem animal and it just, everything just clicked. Like it made sense. Um, it helped me get out of my own way. Cause I think when I'm doing like literal work, it would be maybe too heady. Mm -hmm. And then when I was playing with abstract, people were like, oh, I can feel you in the abstract work. But the, the clever stuff was too heady. So when I did the animals, it like married the, the, the aesthetic that I like, but like people could feel me. And so sure. I kept on just doing that and I haven't looked back. You know, it made sense. That's awesome. So this current body of work that we're showing, how many years have you been kind of doing this at this point? Like I think that, that owl. owl I did in uh, 2010. So okay. we're, we're going on 13, 14 years. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I've drawn yeah. like four people since then. Yeah. 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 Well, as you know, that's all <laughs> I ever did for years. And, right. uh, you know, my yeah. animals have taken over yeah. for me too. Yeah. So. You have animals mostly now, right? Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. You know, I, have, I flip flop around, but yeah, we'll talk about me later. It's oh, about you. We'll talk about you. Yeah. yeah. Well, I love your stuff. Thank you. And I am super excited to see new things coming out from you. We do have a couple of beautiful originals. We have a long, uh, long horn. Go sheep. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Mountain big goat. The big horn sheep. Yes. yes. And oh, an amazing sheep. bobcat with some Sororo and doves. Yeah. And uh, of course, all these things you can go to ianrussellart.com and see all of Michael's works currently on the website. Mm -hmm. You can actually order from there as well. Uh, his works are offered in original paintings. And the works that we're really focused on are clays that you actually print yes. and then mount on cradled maple. Yes, is that sir. correct? Yes, sir. And then uh, varnish over. They're signed in number. Mm -hmm. And um, and then we have paper reproductions from 8 by 10 to 16 by 20. Yeah. So um, tonight's Art Walk, uh, you'll probably be viewing this after Art Walk, but you can always come into the gallery, see any of Michael's work. We'd be glad to tell you about it. Hopefully we'll get him back out here for another show. But we're going to head downstairs so you can actually see the work now and uh, give you an idea of what we've been talking about. Thanks, Ian. Thank you. Yeah, man. We'll see you downstairs in a minute. Yeah. Bink. Hey, hey, we are back down in the gallery. Art lovers, welcome back. Uh, we're back with Michael Rohner. And I'm gonna leave Mike here to kind of just talk about his work, because you don't need to see me. And then maybe we can extract a story or two and how you used to go around selling your work when you first started. That oh, was yeah. a great story. I'd love to hear that again. Yeah, love to and I'm it. sure the viewers would love to hear that. So yeah. uh, before I walk away, tonight is Art Walk. If you guys are seeing this right now, you need to come down. We're here till eight o'clock, get to meet this handsome guy and everybody else and uh, be a part of the wonderful evening. So take it away, Michael. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. As you said, I'm Michael Rohner coming from Berkeley, California. 
behind me you're looking at my work, uh, pen and ink mixed media illustrations. I mostly do uh, ink on paper with a variety of color mediums. Um, this Bobcat and Ansaguaro piece with the woodpecker and dove um, is uh, ink with watercolor and paint marker. Um, some of the pieces like this uh, big horn uh, sheep here uh, is marker, watercolor, oil pastel, forget what else I use, but you know, I, I have fun. Um, so I would love it if you could come down, check out my work in person, and I'd love to talk to you. Ian asked me about, yes, um, we talked a little upstairs about how I got my start, and um, when I first started, I had no idea how to get my art out there, was not gallery ready, so I ended up putting a bunch of prints in my backpack, and I would go downtown to bars, I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico at the time, <laughs> and I would go to bars and parks and anywhere that people gathered and just start slinging my prints. Like I would look for someone I knew because it was kind of a smaller town. We start talking and be like, oh, let me show you something. <laughs> Pull my prints out and then, you know, we just uh, eventually would start getting a crowd where people would be like, oh, can I see those next? And I would, you know, work work from like sundown till I'd go to after parties. I was staying out way too late at the time, but <laughs> I was going everywhere. Like uh, sell it, you know, sell up bars when they close, like figure out where everybody was going afterwards. Sure. And then go like, I'll, I'll go there too. So go to a party and then, you know, try to make as much as I could. And I wasn't making a lot, but you know, you sell one print in each place and you know, yeah. that's food for the next day. Tell everybody where you can see your work uh, coming up next and if they're over in California, do you have any galleries over there? Yes, uh, work is in um, the Raven's Wing Magical Company and, and Lake Merritt. Um, uh, Artillery AG in San Francisco. Um, probably another that I'm not remembering right now. Uh, the next show I have coming up is uh, California Roots Music Festival in Monterey Memorial Day weekend. Uh, Monterey, California. Great show. Well, hey, thanks for time. Yeah. Come down, come and see us. We're looking for you all here tonight. Bye, Dave.